Heidi with Heavenly Minded Home, and I wanted to give you kind of our full Hurricane Helene update. Now, we've put a few things out, shared a few things. Um, we are just over a week past um, the hurricane coming through here where we are in Western North Carolina, and um, we have a lot of content we recorded during that period um, that I'm really excited to share with you guys this week, but I thought having one update to really talk about the hurricane itself and what's actually going on here in Western North Carolina. Um, I, I don't know about, um, I know South Carolina was affected, Tennessee was affected, but being here just, um, we're just outside of kind of in between Asheville and Hickory, um, down where you're probably hearing names, Swannanoa, Old Fort, Black Mountain, um, all of this area in where we are down, you know, Marion into Morganton, um, these areas are, it's catastrophic. So I figured before this week, you know, kind of what kind of content we have that will be coming out and then really just an update of everything that, that actually went down and is happening now with Hurricane Helene, you know, just barreling through our sleepy little mountain town. And so I guess we kind of just start at the beginning. We knew that the hurricane was coming. It is hurricane season. Um, hurricanes are going to keep coming. We can get hurricanes, you know, into December. Hurricanes for the mountains of Western North Carolina mean that you'll get some rain. Um, you can have some trees come down that can happen just because the ground gets so saturated especially old dead trees you know heavy limbs things like that can come down um for us we have a basement that usually gets some flooding so we were you know prepared for that keeping an eye out um, rivers and creeks things like that can um, really swell up and flood we have a little sleepy peaceful creek that will flood up, um, fill up the whole way, go over our driveway um, and connect with our front field. And we, we literally call it Lake Garcia and it kind of just makes a whole big thing. And, and we've been trapped in our property before, but I'm talking for like a period of a few hours, maybe a day, you know, where you're stuck in and can't get out. So getting hurricanes up here isn't an unusual thing. It happens. We all know what it means when a hurricane's coming, and we all prepare accordingly. You could have power outages for a matter of hours, maybe a day, maybe two, if things are wild. That's kind of what a hurricane means up here. So we have Sabrina and her family here, and they're, you know, fresh, just got here from California a month ago. And so we're kind of explaining to them, because of course, being Californians, you hear hurricane, and that's so different than what we're used to out there. And we're like, no, 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 guys, this is what hurricane means. You know, it's really not that big of a deal. We have the animals, we have to be careful of trees, um, make sure everything in the basement's picked up, because we'll probably have some flooding we have to deal with. Like, we had it down, we had it ready. That's not what happened. We woke up Friday morning um, very early and our basement was already ankle deep of water. Um, there was um, power for a very small amount of time. The power flickered, um, had been flickering all throughout the night. Um, but then early Friday morning, the power went out and it stayed out for the following seven days, um, which is absolutely insane out here. Um, we are in a well, so power being out means no water either. Um, the, the wind was just, I mean, insane. The rain, it was just buckets upon buckets. I mean, we live out somewhere where there are rivers and creeks and lakes and waterfalls everywhere. There's so much water out here. Um, we have rain consistently we get heavy storms like we, we have things like that all the time our ground out here is used to lots and lots of moisture this rain was intense the creek started flooding in no time we started noticing trees down all over the place um and it was like you would look out the window one minute and then you would look out again and there was a tree you would turn your back again for one more minute and there was another tree um it really just, you know, kept going and we're like, wow, okay, I can't believe the power's out. You know, this, this storm does look, you know, pretty, pretty bad. 
I'm, I'm sure they'll have the power up soon. You know, the, our, as much as I want to say, you know, uh, our power company, they are always raising our rates. They're always doing this. Duke Energy is a pain in all of our booties because they are. They're always hiking prices up on everything. You know, they're kind of a pain, right? Nobody wants to pay the power guy when they're always, you know, charging you more and more and more and more for the same amount of power. They do an amazing job and linemen are the true heroes of everything, honestly. And um, so we were kind of like, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. They have an amazing team. Um, we have a Duke plant here in town. They, they, have, they have lots of resources. And so they always get stuff up so quickly. It'll all be okay. We just have to get through today. As the day went on, the storm kept going. It kept, of course, 14 people in a house now all kind of sheltering together with no power, no water, no running bathrooms, right? You're, you're having all of those things go on and you're like, okay, um, you know, trying to keep the six-year-old occupied, help reassure the kids, you know, kind of doing all of the things, doing okay, you know, what food do we have on hand that we could cook? Um, I had a, I have a little camping propane stove, so it's like, okay, you know, we do have that. And again, all of this will be on soon. It, it'll all be okay. Um, we just have the, the creek right here that floods, so it must be just us that you know, are, you know, kind of in a bad spot with the power going out. And I'm sure nobody else is having, you know, any, hopefully nothing too terrible, right? And we're cut off, cell signal is gone, right? All of these things are just going out. And you're like, okay, well, it'll be okay. So then we go out because we start to notice that um, the bus that the Bensons have, it's like a city transit bus that they traveled out here in. Where we had parked it, the water was really coming up further and further. But as the water came up further and further, we noticed the bus was, was literally starting to move. That's terrifying. Um, so my brother has a truck. They went down, you know, they, it was like this battle. And finally, they were able to thankfully get the, tr the bus pulled up. My brother helped pull, you know, the kids are, everybody's down there pushing and pulling and turning and twisting and doing everything, watching out for trees because trees are coming down all over the place. They get the bus pulled up so at least it is up on dry ground or drier ground and it's not going you know we're not going to have this you know terrible incident we're doing all of these things um we go down and are kind of just double checking on the animals we have the sheep and so as the storm is just continuing to go i mean it's like it just it never let up it just kept going and going and going you're hearing trees crack and fall literally all over the place or it's we live in the forest you know there's trees everywhere we're just listening to stuff crack and fall the rain is not stopping. The wind is not stopping. I mean, everything is just going bananas everywhere. We are trying to decide what to do with the sheep. Um, we're looking at it. We can't even move them into our barn because our barn is like crumbling. The doors blown off of it. I'm talking big, massive metal hinges just ripped off like they were nothing. The roof is just caving into it now. You know what I mean? You're just, you're looking at all these things and I'm like, oh, wow. I can't even put them in the barn. I can't even just, you know, we let them stay outside because they have a, a thick grove of trees that they like to, they usually, the sheep usually prefer to go into the grove of trees versus going into the barn. So we said, okay, we'll let them go in there. If the storm gets too bad, we can move them to the barn. Well, the storm is now super bad. We cannot move them to the barn because the barn is literally, we have to go through the barn to get into the sheep pen and stuff is falling on our heads as we try to get into it. Um, it it's crumbling, you know, that's not going to work. We're standing right outside of the electric fence of the sheep pen, you know, looking at it and going, okay, what is the best option for them? I'm not wanting to stress them out. If they are, you know, God gave them an innate understanding of things. And if they feel most comfortable tucked in a grove of trees, you know, and that's where they feel protected and comfortable, that's where we'll leave them. I don't want to cause them more stress throughout this. As we're standing there discussing this, we hear a crack. And literally from the roots, a massive tree in the middle of their pen. And I'm not talking, again, old, dying tree. I'm talking massive, huge, healthy tree. Massive root span just falls. I've never ran so fast in my life to try to get down into the sheep pen. It literally fell where my sheep Ruth had just been standing. I mean, a, a moment before. Thank the Lord for his protection and provision. The sheep ran as it came and, and they, they got to a safe space. But this massive tree comes down. It nearly hits our sheep 
it lands on our sheep fencing, right? You know, you're, you're just all of these things. We look up, there's more trees kind of teetering up there. There's trees all around us. You can hear them cracking and falling. We have to now gather scared sheep up. Um, we're just grabbing what we can. Um, luckily, we had a bucket of some treats in the barn that hadn't gotten destroyed yet. So the kids are helping, you know, to kind of like, here, come on, come on, come on. We herd up our sheep and our livestock guardian dog. We're tucking them up here in next to us by the house. Um, you know, it just, it, it just was that like string of events that just kept going. But again, you have no communication with anyone. So you're going, wow, like, is it this bad anywhere else? I have no idea. Let's make the most of it. Let's be as encouraging as we can. I don't want the kids to be scared. It's all going to be okay. And so as the storm finally starts to come down a little bit, we come out, you know, we all pitch in, we start clearing trees off of our driveway so that someone can get out. My brother's truck is the only one that's going to be able to, but even though it looks like most of our driveway is now literally gone, like gone, gone. Um, we get the trees cleared off of the driveway. We get enough of the tree cleared off the sheep fence that it can be mended. Sheep can get back into that, right? They need a safe space that they can be. We're doing all of that. And as the day goes on and we realize, wow, power is really not coming back on. My brother and I go, okay, we're seeing, we're getting a little bit of signal. We're seeing people talking about, this sounds like this is really bad everywhere. Um, let's try to run out and grab, you know, a couple supplies, a couple things that, that we can use here while all of this is looking like it might be out for, for a minute longer. My brother and I leave in his truck. Um, everybody was going to stay here and just kind of keep things, you know, kind of together, pull out the camping stove, you know, do stuff like that. Everywhere we go, it is just insane trees down everywhere, power lines everywhere, live lines just flopping around in water, lines, we go down our, one of our main roads of town and all the trees on the hill are literally just hanging down on the row of power lines all down this main road. Whole areas, I mean, everywhere we go, uh, you just have roads cut off because the whole area I'm talking like up to big industrial buildings, up to like their signs up above where you walk in. There's aerial footage that came out the next day of our shopping centers and things. And it's like a lake with just a couple roofs dotting it. The, some water had started to recede a little bit. The, the silt and mud that's left is so thick, you can't get through it. Um, we headed down the road a little further. The next town is about 20 minutes down the road. We got there because somebody had said there was a gas station open. So we said, okay, well, we'll go there and try to find, you know, something. We found a food line that was open and found something again. There, uh, the, the devastation, I mean, we went by, we went to try to go to our Ingalls grocery store that I go to, you know, we frequent so often down the road from the Aldi that we love. And my brother could have floated on a raft in the intersection and touched the light pole, you know, the, the lights hanging at the thing. It, it, it was so much water. We saw the high school football field and the water's up to the goalpost. Um, it's everywhere you look. There's trees through homes. There's trees across everything. There's power poles just snapped and laying down. There's, you know, areas where we would drive on the interstate that are normally just fields. It looked like we were driving alongside of a lake. It, it just was the most surreal thing ever. And, and nobody has power, nobody has connection. Everybody, we're all just kind of like, what is going on? So trying to get home, we realize all of a sudden we just start seeing emergency vehicle after emergency vehicle just going by us. And we get cut off like two exits away from our house and are told we have to get off, you can't go any further. The interstate has been closed. I-40, which we live right off of, has been closed. And we're like, what happened up there? What kind of accident happened that, you know, they've closed it? And so it was really just such a surreal thing that, you know, we get home and we're like, all right, guys, I'm sure the power will be up tomorrow. Everything will be okay. We're checking the Duke Energy app and it's got no updates on anything, but 
it'll be okay. This will all get done together. Let's just get some rest. We'll wake up in the morning and kind of reassess. So everybody gets some rest to the best of their ability. And, and I know it's, you feel, you feel, you know, whatever, you know, you feel, I, I know that it could be so much worse, but it was one of those things where I heard, um, heard someone else talking about it too, but we live in the South. It was still fairly warm. Like when it's hot and humid, right? Like you're, you're trying to get good sleep. You're trying to do this, but it's like, nobody's getting good sleep. You know, we're all exhausted physically because we've been doing crazy stuff that we're not used to, you know, doing from sunup to sundown, you know, all day moving trees and, you know, doing all this, but like trying to get some rest and you're like, you just, you're exhausted, but you're like uncomfortable, um, you know, and you hear there's no power, there's no anything. So it's like, it's like a silence that's so silent that none of us are really used to anymore that you almost hear more because it is so silent. Um, so you're trying to get some rest, trying to do that. Everybody's hot, sticky, uncomfortable. Nobody's bathed, you know, all of these things. You're just like, oh, you haven't done your normal. We wake up the next day and it's like, okay, what is the mission for today? What do we need to do? You know, if the power doesn't come back on today, what do we need? Okay, well, we've got to figure out water. We've got to figure out food. We've got to figure out, you know, what what resources can we utilize? But then we start hearing the reports and getting a little bit, like we're all kind of checking. Some of us are getting like some spotty signal. And you're starting to see the devastation, right? Because again, we're just cut off. We can only see what we can see and we can see a lot. But then you start seeing how widespread this is you start seeing the depth of everything that's going on and it is just insane. Then you start panicking. We have we have great friends that lived on the lake. Oh, we have so-and-so over here. Oh my, she has a tree through her house that you know, came through her dining room. You know, you start going through all of this and trying to, you know, the whole time trying to stay in contact with my mom. My mom is through the mountain pass that now literally doesn't exist. Um, luckily my mom is safe. Okay. She's safe. She's gotten to somebody and she knows that we're safe. You know, you're, you're trying to do all the things and you're hearing all the stuff and it just is so much. And it was like every day that just continued to increase every day, learning a little bit more and more of what's going on and the extent of the damage, you know, we're, we're a week, just over a week in now. And it's just, it, it literally is like just the tip of the iceberg. And so for us, you know, a week with the power down every day, it was all right. We can't do, we literally can't do anything about anything anywhere else. We have 14 people here that need to stay safe, fed, clean, hydrated, right? And, and so every day it was waking up after having not great sleep, um, not feeling so hot and okay, what has to be done? Okay. We can't, you know, we, we had a uh, great friends of ours. He risked everything and like found a path to get up to us because they've closed off all the roads, literally North Carolina. No one can travel to Western North Carolina. He found a way to get us up some supplies, brought us some water, some food, some, you know, some, some key components. Okay. We got those. Um, you know, we, we have some vehicles that have gas some vehicles that don't have gas. We can't get anything out anyways. We're using them to charge stuff. We are, you know, we have a burn barrel. We're cutting down wood. We're having to then dry the wood so the wood can be burned. Um, that's a whole process. Um, kids are collecting sticks and leaves and things like that. And we're laying them out so that they can dry out. We're collecting water from the Creek and hauling it up. You know, every, I mean, talk about a massive task, you know, hauling up enough water for 14 people. We're putting it on the, you know, makeshift burn barrel stove and purifying the water and you're cooling the water, right? You're like going through this whole process, but every day it's just been like, okay, what can we learn and what can we do? Okay. This is what we can do. And it's amazing. You know, we've, I, I feel like it, and you're going to see this in all the other videos because I do believe life is as lovely as we choose to see it. And so when we choose to always look for that silver lining, it does help. So much especially in the period where you're like hey you know let's just sit down let's record this let's do a little bit of the normal things that we do i'm gonna still brush my teeth every morning i'm still gonna wash my face every morning um we're bathing in a creek you know we're, we're doing the things that we can to try to make the best of it i lit my lamp berger a few times so that way the house at least smelt good because i'm telling you a week of sun beating on your house that's full of water in the basement and the mildew in the mold that's growing, plus a 14 people in a house that have not bathed like appropriately for a week, 
plus all the laundry, plus all the dishes, right? Plus all, plus, 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 plus. You're like, wow, this is getting a little, this is getting a little much. Is the power ever going to come on? The reports you're hearing, they're telling us it could be a month. You know, you're just going through all of these things. And it was like, okay, silver lining, Lord, you have blessings every day. Where are those blessings? Let's keep focusing there. And that is true. That is what we need to do. But now a week out as we're getting some connectivity back and starting to see the way that people are talking about the storm and the news is reporting on the storm, I feel like it's quite different than what's actually happening here. So I will be doing an update video to add into a little bit more of the, there's a lot of weird talk going on in the what's actually going on here. And there's a lot of conversation to be had, FEMA, Red Cross, government help, people being turned away, help being called out. Like there's a lot of weird stuff happening and there are reports of it everywhere. This is the most catastrophic thing to happen to this entire Southeast region ever. I mean, anyone, it, it, the devastation and the amount of life lost and property just that will never recover is immense. There are so many small businesses out here, family-owned businesses, multi-generational businesses and farms. They're destroyed. There are going to be so many people that will never be able to recover from this. I mean, I, I don't know how else to convey how catastrophic this event is to such a large area. From the Asheville area, down to here, you know, Chimney Rock, Lake Lure, up into Boone. I mean, every town we could list off around to Spruce Pine and some creepy stuff going on with all of that up there. You're hearing about all the stuff with eminent domain and the quartz and the lithium. And these are very real things that are happening. This is huge. And while we have so much to be thankful for, and I'm going to keep talking about it because God's blessings are everywhere. I am so thankful that our house is standing. I am so thankful now that we can at least start to assess the damage and start to try to, to work through it, right? At least we have that hopeful availability. Um, we found somebody that was such a blessing and came and got us gravel so that way we can get out of our driveway. We have people coming down from Ohio to help us cut trees, people that are bringing supplies. Um, our home is located in a great spot that we can get supplies here and start passing them out. We're going to have to find some way to get a new barn of some sort set up. Winter is coming, right? We have very real needs and very real things now that are going to have to be addressed. But God, he always makes a way. And to see the blessing, to see the thing, again, we're going to talk more about this in a second video because it needs to be said loud and clear for everyone to hear what's actually going on. The churches. Everywhere you go in every one of these towns, guess what everybody's talking about? This church has this, this church has this, this church is here, this church is doing this. People are being the church. You want to help? Find real people that you can connect with to get real help to those who need it. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're asking around, we're connecting with churches, we're, we're helping to be a space where stuff can come, it can get offloaded, and it can go right into the hands of the people who need it that resources can be collected and the proper things that need to be bought from local people here, right? Going to local business to say, who has gravel? Who does construction? Who does this? Let's support you guys because this is how we rebuild. We rebuild with our own, right? We rebuild with those who can come and pour into the area. And so our day was chaotic. The week has been exhausting. We are all so tired. All of us feel like we have really bad colds and none of us have colds. We're just exhausted. We're just worn down. We're all waking up with the sun. We are all barely keeping our eyes open as the sun goes down. We are spending all day gathering water, gathering sticks, cutting wood, boiling water, hand washing everything we can possibly hand wash. Um, just trying to go out and find gas or water or food is this you know long and arduous process because you're having to hunt around for it it's you know it's very difficult to just get from place to place you know it's getting better as time goes on but it just it's so much and then the little reports you do see the things you hear from from neighbors and from friends 
understanding the depth of destruction around us, now starting the, to see a little bit of footage from others. This is insane. Seeing this, seeing people that have gone through things like Katrina and, and more, right? People talking about, you know, people even here that, that lived there in those storms and went through that, that said this, that Katrina has nothing on what going through this was like. Hearing words like that, you're like, there's no way. I mean, Katrina was the biggest deal. And then finding out that people don't even, haven't even heard about this. They don't even know what's going on. The, the, the way the news is talking about stuff, the things people are saying, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not at all what's happening here. Um, it's definitely a little concerning. That is for sure. But we'll continue to share about, yes, the reality of what is going on. Yes, how we can be the church for one another and help. And also, I think even more importantly, just the lessons that God reveals in every situation we go through. But yes, pray for everyone who's been affected by Hurricane Helene. If you want to help, you want to know more, I have links down in the description. Check all of that out. But then stay tuned because regardless of what it is you're facing, whether you're here joining us and if you are here and you're going through Helene, we have a link down below too um, for anyone who is in need of help. Let us know. Anybody who has different ways to help, there's a spot for you to leave that feedback as well. But there's so much that we all face in life. And I think how we go about it as Christians and how we live that faith out for the world to see, for our loved ones to see, or even ourselves to see, is really such an important thing to talk about. And so, um, yeah, we're gonna keep talking about it because, right, God gets you to it, he'll get you through it. And we're all where we are for a reason and a purpose. And while the devastation is unimaginable, the response from the church right now is just huge. And we're gonna keep putting it out there and keep sharing it and keep pouring into others that all might come to a saving knowledge of the Lord. All right, I gotta go guys. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. Bye friends.